So a couple of questions for the audience. My name is Andrew Rache. I'm from Personal Do Democracy Media and Civic Hall. How many of you believe that the world would be a better place if all 7 billion people were connected to an open internet? Open and accessible as low a cost as possible. Next question. How many of you believe that even though Congress just ruled that the NSA can no longer do mass surveillance, that the NSA will actually stop doing mass surveillance? Not a single person. What does that say about our trust in government? And the other question is, is how many of you have read the terms of service all the way through before you clicked agree on that app you were downloading? Two, three people. I believe you can separate the world into two distinct parts, BI and AI, before internet and after internet. 1994 was when the Netscape browser was invented and that is ground zero. So let me ask you a couple more questions about the BI side. Name an institution, a government, an organization of any kind founded before 1994 that today wants to see the internet distributed as openly and freely to as many people as possible in the world. You won't be able to find one. There's one outlier. But let's talk about the AI side. Let's take Larry and Sergey at their word. Make all the world's information available to everyone and do no evil. Well, unfortunately, Google can no longer do no evil for three reasons. One is they are making money, and it's really hard to do no evil and make no money. Very hard to do. But the second reason that it's really hard for Google to do no evil is that the BI guys are fighting back, and they're organizing themselves to try to control the way in which the internet is going to work. Everybody remember SOPA and PIPA? Okay, well, it, their TPP is about to pass tomorrow, and it isn't quite the same. And the third reason is because there's a whole bunch of companies that are exploiting the fact that our government doesn't understand the internet, or that the BI guys want to control it and are making money just collecting our data and only for the purposes of greed. It's almost like there's two different currencies. There's a currency of money, and as a currency of information, and they're trying, and the government and corporations from before the internet's birth are trying to create a new Federal Reserve for information, and information is a currency. But there is one outlier, and that's the New York City, I'm sorry, the New York Public Library. This is the New York City Public Library, and about a year ago, I had the pleasure of meeting the president of the New York Public Library at a dinner, and he announced that 10,000 people a month are accessing the internet using New York City Public Library branches. And afterwards, I said to him, why don't you let them take it home? And he said, what do you mean take it home? I said, you lend them books. Why don't you lend them Wi-Fi cards and let the students and the people in the libraries take them home? So his head exploded. We went to the Knight Foundation. We went to Google. We went to Robinhood and OSF. And we got $2 million. And there's now a 10,000-unit pilot giving out Wi-Fi cards to New York City public school students and after-school programs. And here's a quick idea. Imagine if there was a law passed in the country that would allow coding to be considered a language, not just a separate thing separated from the, their core learning needs. So we didn't stop there. So Tony and I are now talking about what would it be like if the library was to become an ISP. Imagine going to the library, getting your library card, and getting a secure email address, being offered an Android phone. Imagine if the New York City Public Library was able to light up NYCHA housing projects with low-cost Wi-Fi, which is what the mayor of New York is trying to do right now. Imagine if the library was, instead of the back end of the fight for the open internet, was at the front end of the fight for the open internet. That's where libraries belong. The internet needs to be open, and we need to all get together. We have to ask ourselves questions about what happens when we press agree. We have to challenge our government to keep it open. We have to make sure that the data that they collect is collected in a way where we can see what they're doing with it. And by the way, this is not an internet organization. This is a walled garden. This is not what the open internet is about. This is wrong. And we should call it out, and we should educate our elected leaders that this kind of behavior is not good for our society. Our society is only going to be good if we're all connected. And we have to take responsibility for that happen. And if it doesn't happen, the BI guys are going to come. They're going to take this away. They're going to make it possible for there to be a new kind of Federal Reserve. So instead of having a democracy which was great in the agricultural age and subverted in the industrial age and being destroyed in the information age, let's take responsibility for the currency of information and save our democracy now. Thank you very much.